Hey guys, uh, BBD here, and we've got yet another playtest video. This time, uh, I kind of took a trip to the dark side. I'm playing Black Red, uh, Rakdos, or Zombies, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I like to call it Zombies, even though most of the creatures aren't zombies anymore. But, you know, old old habits die hard. So, uh, I'll talk a little bit about the deck here. Um, it's You got, like, the same standard zombie core, like... Basically, I like to call them the 12 Gs. You got, like, Giraffes, the Ghouls, and the Gravecrawlers. And uh, kind of the staples of, of, like, every zombie deck since, you know, these cards were printed. So these are still, like, the best threats at these costs that you can play. And, um, but, like, beyond that, instead of playing, like, other zombies like uh, Highborn Ghouls or... Things like that. Uh, the deck has moved towards playing more like mid rangey creatures that, um, even though they're not zombies, they kind of fit the theme of the deck a little bit better because right now, like, you want to make sure your deck is capable of beating Thrag Tusk. And what uh, all these mid range creatures do is they let your guys, like, profi profitably interact with Thrag Tusk. Like, Knight of Infamy lets a Grave Crawler attack with three power, which trades with a Thrag Tusk. Uh, Falcon Wrath Aristocrat goes over the top of a Thrag Tusk. Uh, a Thunder Maw Hellkite goes over the top of a Thrag Tusk. And a Hellrider just kind of like powers through a Thrag Tusk. It doesn't really like go over the top, but it just outputs so much damage to kind of undo the life gain. So the general idea of the deck is to just kind of go bigger than Thrag Tusk while still being very aggressive. And the fact that all these big creatures have haste, and even Knight of Infamy has like pseudo haste because it can give a guy a little extra damage um, makes this deck very difficult for a lot of decks to deal with and uh, this particular list is the list that won uh, in GP San Antonio last uh, yeah last weekend and um, the second week in a row that this deck has won so this deck's pretty sizable force in the metagame right now it's definitely something that uh, you should know how to play with play against um, and be prepared for if you're playing standard uh, as for the mana base, because we're casting Thunder Maw Hellkites and Hellriders, which both require double red, um, you know, that, that makes like a single mountain as well as basically 16 dual lands, uh, if you count Cavernous Souls, to cast these cards. And it's a little gross playing a card like a mountain when you're playing Drolf's Messenger in your deck, but uh, it's pretty essential to cast these cards on time, so it, it's worth like the little bit lack of uh, consistency in casting Drolf's Messenger. But uh, with, with like the four Dragon Skulls, the four Gold Gates, the four Blood Crypts, and the four Caverns, you should be able to cast these cards uh, pretty reasonably. And outside of the creature base, we have basically some, some removal spells. Um, Pillar of Flames are here instead of something like Brimstone Volley, mainly because of the rise of this particular deck. Uh, Pillar is very good at dealing with like Drolf's Messengers, Knight of Infamies, uh, Grave Crawlers, etc. And... Um, Pillar is also very good against the green white deck, which is kind of big now as well. Uh, it deals with Silverblade Paladin, and it deals with uh, like Absence Pilgrims or Champion of Parish early. A uh, couple of Victim of Knights. These are basically just destroy target creature most of the time. Uh, there's not a whole lot of like vampire, werewolf, zombies being played outside of this particular deck where there's a lot of them. And then Searing Spear is just kind of the best burn spell uh, in standard right now. So you definitely want to max on copies of those. But uh, this is the deck. Uh, talk a bit about the sideboard. All right, so for the sideboard, uh, we have four Vampire Nighthawks, which these come in basically against the like aggressive decks like the Mirror Match. Uh, it's just kind of bricks their creatures and gains you a little bit of life, and it's kind of hard to race, too. So uh, those are very good there. Uh, Zealous Conscript's kind of good against uh, like Planeswalkers and like various control decks, as are Underworld Connections. Uh, just keeps your, keeps the fuel coming against a deck that's going to be like terminusing all your guys. Uh, Bonfire is mostly for like the green white deck. It just destroys that deck because that deck's uh, a lot of the versions of that deck now are playing like Thalia, uh, Avacyn's Pilgrim, Champion of the Parish, Mayor of Aberbrook, um, Silverblade Paladin. Just all these cards that just get wrecked by a bonfire for two. So that's uh, that's pretty much the purpose of that card. And then the next one like. How could we play a zombie deck without Appetite for Brains? It just wouldn't make any sense. So, um, Appetites are in there. Basically, for Thrag Tusk. <laughs> not gonna, not gonna mess around. It's basically for Thrag Tusk, but it's, it's good at, at getting some other key cards in those matchups too. Like, 
uh, Planeswalkers or like Terminus and stuff. And then Cremate's pretty uh, ex self-explanatory. Uh, it's for like all the four-color reanimator decks or various reanimator decks. If you can get their guy out of their yard in response to like an unburial, right? So you uh, buy yourself just infinite ter infinite time by doing that. So basically, that's the purpose of that card. But uh, this is the Rakdos slash Zombies aggressive deck that's been tearing up standard lately. And uh, hopefully, I will be able to rack up dose wins against Todd today. So.